Okay, so in this example, guys, what we're looking into trying to do is find the angle theta, right? So we could take the sine inverse on both sides if we wanted to, but in reality, guys, we know that we're just kind of looking at theta equals you know, sine inverse of square root of 3 over 2. And we'll get to the next one in, uh, in a second. So basically, again, we're asking is sine of what angle equals the square root of 3 over 2, right? That's the question we're asking. Sine of what angle equals the square root of 3 over 2. So if you do not know your unit circle by this point in time, you are going to struggle greatly with your quiz and your test. So we need to understand the first quadrant of that unit circle. And we can make life fairly easy with that by do, 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 do. knowing all of these angles, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. By knowing all these angles, we should also be able to know the coordinate points. And again, guys, I really don't want you to be practicing um, or studying or like trying to memorize this unit circle. Because if you do enough problems, you will have this unit circle memorized. And I gave you that nice big pink sheet that I'm going to pass back today, which is plenty enough examples to practice on, isn't it? Yeah, so if you really do that whole worksheet like I asked, you don't need to memorize anything. You are going to have done enough problems that you'll be like, I understand. I get this unit circle. I can recreate this. So again, guys, all we're asking is the sign of what angle equals the square root of 3 over 2. So remember, sine represents the y coordinate based on the unit circle. So we're just looking on the y circle. To, oh, there we go. Right? What is that angle? Pi over 3 or 60 degrees. But um, we'll just use this as radians because in this unit circle here, pi over 3 or 60 degrees. Done. OK? Now, let's try to get into, so the kind of the point of this, though, is to represent that this thing's changed. And because, again, if we look in the constraint, does that angle fall within the constraint of our domain for sine that is restricted on? Does that angle fall within the constraint? That's in the first quadrant. That can fall in the first quadrant, right? We're good. All right. So let's look at negative square root of 3 over 2. And this is where, um, this is where the information of the using that restricted domain comes in handy. So here's pi over 3. Now, we've got to understand our reference angles. If this is pi over 3, if I wanted to take this point and reflect it over the y-axis, I'm still going to have the same reference angle as pi over 3. Wouldn't you guys agree? If you like took this angle, flipped it over, the measurement from my x-axis to the terminal side is still pi over 3, right? That's why we call it reference angle. So it's really cool. Now, again, this point, the only thing that changes is the x-coordinate, not the y-coordinate. So that angle doesn't work for us, right? So then we go down to here. Well, let's flip this over then this way. Again, the reference angle is still the same. Now, this angle is negative 1 half, common negative square root of 3 over 2. Ooh, that's our answer, right? That's a good angle. But it's not just 1. Look it, there's 2. Because if we took this point and reflected it over, we would have negative, I'm sorry, positive 1 half, comma, negative square root of 3 over 2, right? So when you tell these in your calculator, is the calculator supposed to give you two answers? No, it's only supposed to give you one answer, right? Only one answer. So then which one is it? Which one do we get to pick? This one? That one? It has to be this one because it has to fall within the fourth quadrant, right? So let's figure out what these, uh, what these angles are, though, anyways, just to have a little fun. This is pi over 3. That should be given because we know the unit circle so well. This angle, if we know halfway around the circle is pi, in terms of thirds is 3 pi over 3. So if we go to 3 pi over 3 and then I just add an extra third, that means this angle is 4 pi over 3. Good. And then here, all the way around a circle then would be 2 pi, or in terms of thirds, is 6 pi over 3. So this angle is almost a 2 pi over, is almost a 6 pi over 3, but it's pi over 3 short. So therefore it is 5 pi over 3. However, when we, were, when we graph this, does 5 pi over 3 go outside of this restricted domain? Does it go outside of that domain? Here's the restricted domain. When you graph 5 pi over 3, does it go outside of that half circle? Yeah, look at it. It's outside of it, right? Like you have to go to, like when you have to rotate 
you have to rotate to the second and the third quadrants to get over to the fourth, right? So guess what? This is not the answer. We need to find an angle that is restricted, that is only between negative pi halves and pi halves. So what we need to do is we need to find a coterminal angle, a coterminal angle that has the same initial and terminal side. Does anybody have one in their back pocket that we could use? Yes? Yeah, negative pi over 3. Just do this. Negative pi over 3. Okay? So this answer is negative pi over 3. Now, I don't want you to get confused. Don't always think, oh, it's just going to be the negative form if it's negative. No, 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 that's not the case. 